Welcome to Chax Poetry Talks, a podcast brought to you by Chax Press. This is Charles Alexander. I'm your host and speaker. You can find Chax Press online at chax.org. And now, the podcast. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. This is Charles, and I've been thinking a little bit about how poems get made and some of the significant statements of how poems get made by um, particularly two very diverse poets who make those statements in their poems. I'm going to be looking a little bit at Gary Snyder, probably one of the most well-known American poets of the last 60 or 70 years, uh, one who has won lots of awards and is in some ways a progenitor of the eco-poetics movement, which is possibly where some of the most important work in contemporary poetry is being done. Um, And I've been teaching Snyder. I began a class uh, teaching Snyder, particularly in terms of how one might think about making poems. But when I finished Snyder, I turned to uh, probably someone who I would have said was 30 years ago was the best American poet of the last hundred years that you've never heard of. And that would be Laureen Niedeker. Now I think she has been heard of and her uh, collected poems have been published and well received, and I think many people have even begun academic work on her um, body of work, which is tremendous, deep, and so meaningful. And she might also be taken as a progenitor of the eco poetics movement, even though I would say not so strident about that, maybe not so strident about anything as. Snyder has been known to be, and I don't say that in a negative way. I think of uh, Gary Snyder as someone who has had ideas that are important to all of us and to the earth, and he has uh, continually pushed those ideas in a way that have been helpful. But looking at the poems, I want to look at a poem called Rip Rap, and this is from uh, what I believe was his first book, and he speaks of laying down words um, as one might lay down rocks in building uh, a walkway or a trail. And indeed, uh, at the time um, he wrote many of the poems in this book, he was building trails in the back country in the Pacific Northwest. So here's the poem. Lay down these words before your mind like rocks placed solid by hands in choice of place set before the body of the mind in space and time. Solidity of bark, leaf or wall, riprap of things, cobble of Milky Way, straying planets. These poems, people, lost ponies with dragging saddles and rocky sure foot trails. The world's like an endless, four-dimensional game of go, ants and pebbles. In the thin loam, each rock a word, a creek-washed stone, granite, ingrained, with torment of fire and weight, crystal and sediment linked hot, all change in thoughts as well as things. So in poems, words are accumulated, laid, added to one another, like rocks, no necessary mortar in between, to build something that may be um, variable, as a game of Go is, how things are placed, but is so solid, granite, ingrained, and also powerful, able to impact all change. 
in thoughts and in things. So this is both, I think, a way of making poetry as well as a uh, belief in the power of poetry. Now, Niedeker, I will start with her, with Laurie Niedeker, in looking at a poem where she writes about the job of being a poet, the trade of being a poet, if you will. And here's what she says in Poet's Work. Grandfather raised me, learn a trade. I learned to sit at desk and condense. No layoff from this condensery. So to write a poem is to condense and one can never stop. You know, the work of a poet, when you're a poet, you're always a poet, whether you're writing the poem at the moment or not. So no layoff from this condensery. So condensing is not quite the same as subtracting. It is um, a process of bringing things to a kind of essence. And I think in Nadeker's work to an essence of simplicity and simplicity, I mean simply as the uh, barest that is needed to say what must be said. I, f I find this contrast between Snyder's additive and uh, Niedeker's condensing to be telling uh, uh, a as to how they see the world and to see their work. You know, one more as building something, the other one as finding, condensing, and letting something be known. That's the essence. I also find you know, Snyder's work shows in every poem that aspect of building. Niedeker's uh, seems to flow as if it's the only possible way. I don't think the condensing um, is a pressure on the poem that shows, rather that what it ends up helping her to create is a poem that seems, yes, spare, but also that it could be no other way. She has something to do with rock, too, uh, from her point in um, southern Wisconsin, southeastern Wisconsin, not too far from Milwaukee, not too far from Madison. She was very aware of what the world around her was made of. And I want to first look at a poem in her, uh, one of her great works, North Central, and this is titled Lake Superior. And it has many sections separated by uh, asterisks or dots, whatever the editor, publisher wishes to separate these sections by. And let's look at one or more than one. Lake Superior, in every part of every living thing is stuff that once was rock. In blood, the minerals of the rock. Iron, the common element of earth in rocks and freighters. So St. Marie, big boats, coal black and iron ore red topped with what white castle work, the waters working together internationally, gulls playing both sides. Okay, what gets said in such a poem? I mean, it gets said that there is something connecting every part of every living thing. That something once was rock. It is minerals, it is in blood, it is in everything. It is certainly in iron, and of course we know blood includes iron, 
So iron, the common element of earth, is a common element of ours too. Um, boats transport it everywhere. Waters uh, communicate everything. The waters working together internationally. International trade, yes, but also international um, connections and also uh, the sometimes silliness of international borders, you know, gulls playing both sides. So she is telling an immense amount of information about her world in a very few um, lines and words. So that's the condensary. And you, you're almost not aware of how much goes into that on the first reading, but it, it, it comes to you almost as though you become part of what works in that condensary to understand its motion, its content. In every part of every living thing is stuff that once was rock. In blood, the minerals of the rock. Iron, the common element of earth in rocks and freighters. So St. Marie, big boats, coal black and iron ore red, topped with what white castle work. The waters working together internationally. Gulls playing both sides. From a very small town, Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, and even uh, I, I would say in a place um, in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, that is out of town on a lake, is where Laurie Niedecker performed her work, managed her condensary. And it's just incredible to me, and I think to most people who read her, what she was able to see and express about that place, but also all places and the connectivity of places in this work she made. The place is always essential, and her place is defined by water. I want to end this podcast with a rather longer poem of hers called Pian to Place. A pian is a praise, a kind of ode uh, to a place, to place in general. But I want you to hear in this how she absolutely conveys her world of fish and fowl and flood and water lilies and mud, etc. But she also conveys her life, her mother's, her father's the relationships in her family, and in essence, um, all lives are implicated here. Pian to place, and the place was water. Fish, fowl, flood, water, lily, mud. My life, in the leaves and on water. My mother and I born in swale and swamp and sworn to water. My father, through marsh fog, sculled down from high ground, saw her face at the organ, bore the weight of lake water and the cold. He sained for carp to be sold, that their daughter might go high on land to learn. Saw his wife turn deaf and away she who knew boats and ropes no longer played. She helped him string out nets for tarring, and she could shoot. He was cool to the man who stole his minnows by night and next day offered to sell them back. He brought in a sack of dandelion greens. If no flood, no oranges, none at hand, no marsh marigolds, where the water rose, he kept us afloat. I mourn her not hearing canvas backs, their blast-off rise from the water, 
not hearing Sora rail sweet spoon tapped water glass descending scale teardrop title. Did she giggle as a girl? His skiff skimmed, the coiled celery now gone from these streams due to carp. He knew duckweed. Fall migrates toward late mud lake bottom, knew what lay under leaf decay and on pickerel weeds before summer hum to be counted on. New leaves, new dead leaves. He could not, like water bugs, stride surface tension. He netted loneliness. As to his bright new car, my mother, her house next his, a bird, a hummingbird, can't haul. Anchored here in the rise and sink of life, middle years nights. He sat beside his shoes, rocking his chair, roped not looped in the loop of her hair. I grew in green slide and slant of shore and shade, child time wade through weeds, maples to swing from, peewee glissando sublime slime song, grew riding the river, books at home pier, Shelley could steer as he read. I was the solitary plover, a pencil for a wing bone. From the secret notes, I must tilt upon the pressure, execute and adjust in us sea air rhythm. We live by the urgent wave of the verse. Seven year molt for the solitary bird, and so young, seven years the one dress for town once a week, one for home faded blue striped as she piped her cry. Dancing grounds, my people had none, woodcocks had backland air around. Solemnities such as what flower to take to grandfather's grave, unless water lilies. He who had bowed his head to grass as he mowed Iris now grows on fill, for the two and for him where they lie. How much less am I in the dark than they? Effort lay in us before religions at pond bottom. All things move toward the light, except those that freely work down to ocean's black depths. In us an impulse tests the unknown. River rising. Flood, now melt and leave home. Return, broom wet, naturally wet, under, soak heavy rug. Water bugs hatched, no stake, no snake in the house. Where were they? She who knew how to clean up after floods. He who bailed boats, houses. Water endows us with buckled floors. You with sea water running. In your veins, sit down in water. Expect the long-stemmed blue speedwell to renew itself. Oh, my floating life, do not save love for things. Throw things to the flood, ruined by the flood. Leave the new unbought, all one in the end, water. I possessed the high word. The boy, my friend, played his violin in the great hall. On this stream, my moonlight memory, washed of hardships, maneuvers, barges, through the mouth of the river, they finished in beauty. They fished in beauty. It was not always so. In fishes, red Mars, rising, rides the sloughs and sluices of my mind with the persons on the edge. Um, this is probably a poem worth spending 15 minutes with all on its own. Some absolutely stunning uh, rhymes, uh, rhythms, transitions, uh, that notion looking at grandparents' graves. Um, am I in the dark as much as they? How much do we know on this earth? But we are all naturally wet in a way and connected through water. And the persons always on the edge. 
Thank you, and thank you for listening to these podcasts.